Hello guys and welcome to this guide on how to find all 33 or so unique weapons, armors and gear in Dragon's Age the Vilgard. These items are found in the game world in chests by completing certain missions such as faction missions or companion quest lines and they can found at faction vendors as well. Some of these items are missable, three of the unique ones are tied to companion missions and you can easily miss these if you go past them, so I will go over those first just in case. Lastly, weapons are unique to your class and so I'm playing warrior and only get warrior type weapons. If you're playing as a different class then the items that you're going to get in these chests are going to be different, however how you get these unique items is the exact same. So let's take a look. We're going to start with companion quests, and these are all tied to companion quest lines. Wings of Retribution found during the Waiting Stone companion mission for Harding in the Deep Roads, near the start before you find her contact. Drop down a ladder, and this one is missable, you can't return to this location after completing the quest. Paragon's Silent Gaze, you can obtain this unique item by tackling Harden's personal quest called the Heart of Titan, it's one of her later ones. Again, this location that you go for the quest, you can't return here later in the game, so it is missable. Essence Vortex found in Blackthorn Manor during Emmerich's companion quest, House of the Dead. You go to the manor multiple times for quest for him, it's the second time that you will get this mission and you will get the unique item. Brute Hammer is tied to a quest it's for completing Tasha's personal quest called Slaying the Fang Scorcher. Once you've defeated him, you can explore his horde for the item. Unyielding Stone is another quest for defeating another dragon during Tasha's quest called Katarandu, and you'll get the Unyielding Stone for doing that. Treasure caught in her scales. Huh. Yep. Storm riders carry around bit. Next then, let's go to different locations where you can find items, starting with Arlathan Forest. The Iron Veil is located in a chest in the Arlathan Forest on a small island where you have to solve a big crystal puzzle in order to reach it. The Fade Touch Bulwark is found in the northeastern portion of the region. There is an abandoned fortress you go here to fight during Gate of the Flayed Glories quest.
Next we're in Docktown. Magister's End, you first need access to the catacombs by doing side quests in the city and eventually you'll get a quest called Desperate in Docktown after you've completed the Hidden Horde. It takes a while for these quests to unlock, but the chest is in a new area where you do a quest in the catacombs. Next is Magister's End. Now I haven't actually unlocked this one, although I do know how to do it and where to get it because I haven't found the final item in order to unlock this quest and I've been searching for quite a while. It's the only thing stopping me from making this video so I decided just to go ahead and make it and hopefully someone in the comments will have found the final one. And you have to find all of the candle hops in Docktown. And I'm pretty sure I found all of them except for one in the video. And once you've done that, you can unlock the gate back at the start of the map and you can head up the stairs to find the item. Ness says the real name of this place is the Old Makatis, not the Bread Market. But if you call it that, people will know you're a turtle. I was talking to Antoine and Epcot. They can focus more on studying blight now that Lavendel's secure. I'm glad we could help them, and Lavino. It's a tough little place, and overdue for a break. It reminds me so much of Demetta's Crossing. I know saving it doesn't bring those people back, but still means something. Yeah. In Crossroads, you have Maw of the Black City. You have to defeat 50 monsters in order to open the chest.
Treviso, the hard way. The chest is near where you find Fletcher at the beginning of the mission called Missing in Action. Jenny's belt solved the puzzle in the Della Morte Estates. Hosberg Wetlands, this is where you will find Wedge of Destiny. Finish something coming which starts after completing Davrin's companion questline and doing pretty much all the other side missions in the wetlands. You can find it in a new location that opens after you destroy the corruption. So, the other griffins, you decided what... The Ravine Coast, Crooky Tail's Crest, solve the puzzle and open the Warden's Vault.
do this without a risk. Glorious Ultimatum, complete Dead Men Tell No Tales side quest after finishing all of Tash's companion quests. Meredith's Legacy again, complete Treasure of Sharkmouth Mountain after completing all of Tash's companion quests, which will allow you to unlock this area. Hall of Valor, Call of the Hall, you gain access to the Hall of Valor as part of Tash's arc. There's an arena where Isabella asks you to fight 10 waves of enemies and you receive this as a reward for completing all of them. Spectacular. Necropolis Halls, Pillar of the Departed. Complete Restless Spirit and open the door to start the pinnacle of its kind quest where you fight a dragon and are rewarded with the Pillar of the Departed Armour. Death Rattle, complete the series of haunting quests, there's quite a lot of them, and defeat death, and you're given the Death Rattle once you've completed all of those. So those are all of the ones tied to different locations, but there are a couple now that will be tied to multiple quests. So the first one is Heart of Corruption questline. The Heart of Corruption quest has multiple side quests as part of it, and the uniques are found after you defeat the various bosses part of these quest lines. So you will get the burden when you do Gate of Lost Ages. The Revenant's essence feels darker, more powerful. It must be protecting... You will get the Field Commander's Helm when you've done the Gate of Pale Reflections quest. Casket Sharp is also part of the Pale Reflections quest, which is at the end. The Field Commander's Helm, the previous one, as you can see, was in the Hosberg Wetlands where you go during the quest.
Andraste's Will is part of Gate of Parched Hope's quest. And last resort is after you complete Heart of the Corruption quest, after you've done the Dragon Moss. Next, complete Regrets of the Dreadwolf quest. You will get Mythil's Light if you help her instead of fighting her. All you have to do is make your way all the way to the end of the quest, and I do have a video on my channel if you want to see a full walkthrough. And then when you get to the end, you have to answer questions in a certain order, and you will get Mythil's Light as a reward. Once you've completed the quest, if you follow the side path close to her, you will get a pale reflection. Lastly guys, all the unique items that are left are tied to factions. So we have Arlethan's Fall, which is of course at the Arlethan Forest Quartermaster. Imperium's Resolve in the Shadow Dragon's Quartermaster in Docktown. Plumage of the Mad Crow I don't have because I decided to destroy Treviso, so I got rid of the vendor. But you can find that at the Quartermaster in Treviso. Commander's Presence, Grey Warden's Quartermaster in Hosberg Wetlands. Gravestone, this is found in the Quartermaster in the Necropolis Halls. Extravagant Plate is Fortune, Lords of the Fortunes Quartermaster in Hall of Valor. And lastly, you can get the Crow's Armit from the Black Emporium in Docktown, and that will unlock as part of the main story. So that is it for this Uniques Guide video. If you found it helpful, like and subscribe, and if I have missed any, you can let me know in the comments below. And if you found the final one for the candle hops as well, you can let me know in the comments. And I will see you all in the next video.